So in this video, we'll see how to create our own exception. Now, just to demonstrate that, let me again take two variables which we are doing from a long time and let, you, let me assign the value of i as 8 and j as, let's say, uh, 0. And you know what I'm going to do now as, right? I will say in k equal to i divided by j, we are doing this for a long time. Now, I will check if, or uh, let's say, uh, I'm dividing the number and just printing the value of k as it is. Now, before printing the value, we should uh, we should make sure that we are handling the exception, right? So we will use try catch against the same example which we have done earlier. So this is what we have we have done earlier. So we we are dividing number by number by j, and then of course it will give you an exception, so it will print the error here. But what I want to do now is if I change the value to seven, okay, and or maybe nine, so it will give you the value of value of k as zero, right? And we don't want that. So what we want is if there is if my k value is zero, it should it should print error. So we'll say if my k value is equal to equal to zero, then throw new exception. And we have done that earlier, right? We have done that. So now if you run this code, you can see it is calling error. So that means even if there is no exception, you can generate or you can call the exception. But let's say I don't want to call exception. I want to create my own exception here. I will say this is Telesco exception. Now you can see it is giving you an error. We don't have an exception named as a Telesco exception. If you don't have a class with Telesco exception, let's create it, right? So what we'll do is we'll click on this. You can see that once you go on the error, it will give you the option there. And let me use that. Let me click click on create class Telesco exception. We'll click on finish. It will give you a new class here. And you can see if you want to create your own exception, simply extend it by exception. And that's how you create an exception here. Right? And now if I if I run this code, you can see we got error. So we are throwing our own exception here. In fact, we can accept our own exception. We can say telesco exception, even that will work. So we are throwing telesco exception and we are accepting telesco exception here. But what if I want to send a message? Example, if I say error and if I want to print E. And if you run this code, you, you can see it is throwing an exception which is error com dot telesco dot telesco exception. But what if I want to pass a message? I will say e dot get message. So every error has a message in it. Example, when you say uh, divided by zero, it says slash by zero. That's the message. And you can see we are getting a message which is null. That means this e dot message has nothing because telesco doesn't have any message. Now, how do we send a message? It's very simple. Simply pass a message here. We'll say this is not possible. I mean, the value you are trying to divide is not possible, but it is not accepting. Is because you are creating an object by passing a string. That means you need a constructor which accepts a string. So let's create a constructor here. We'll say Telesco exception which accepts a string s, and that's it. I think it should work now. So we are passing a message. And we are saying get message. And if I run this code, oh, again it is saying null. Now, why is the case? I'm passing the thing, right? But the problem is we are just passing it. Where I mean, how do we inform this get message that you have to fetch the message from S? Now, if you go to exception class, you can see in exception class we have. Can you see that we have a message? We are calling a super method. We are calling a super. That means it will call the throwable constructor and you can see we have a passage here so from our class when you say string s that message should should reach here how that is reaching from exception in exception we are pass we are getting the message and we are passing that message in the super in the super method which is passing to the constructor of throwable from our class also we have to call super by passing s so this message which is this is not possible goes into s now that message from s goes into exception which is message and from that message goes into throwable detail message. So that's how it is working and if you run this code now you can see we got error this is not possible. So if you want to create your own exception it is not that difficult create your own class name a class and extend with exception create a constructor which uh, which accept the string and create a construct uh, call the super class constructor by writing super. So that's it. That's how you create a user-defined exception and that's how you can use it.